October 8th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Jeremiah chapter 31 from the Old Testament. At that time I will be the God of all the clans of Israel, and they will be my people. I, the Lord, affirm it. The Lord says, The people of Israel who survived death at the hands of the enemy will find favor in the wilderness as they journey to find rest for themselves. In a far-off land the Lord will manifest himself to them. He will say to them, I have loved you with an everlasting love. That is why I have continued to be faithful to you. I will rebuild you, my dear children Israel, so that you will once again be built up. Once again you will take up the tambourine and join in the happy throng of dancers. Once again you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. Those who plant them will once again enjoy their fruit. Yes, a time is coming when watchmen will call out on the mountains of Ephraim, Come, let us go to Zion to worship the Lord our God. Moreover, the Lord says, Sing for joy for the descendants of Jacob. Utter glad shouts for that foremost of the nations. Make your praises heard. Then say, Lord, rescue your people. Deliver those of Israel who remain alive. Then I will reply, I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them in front of the distant parts of the earth. Blind and lame people will come with them. So will pregnant women and women about to give birth. A vast throng of people will come back here. They will come back shedding tears of contrition. I will bring them back praying prayers of repentance. I will lead them beside streams of water, along smooth paths where they will never stumble. I will do this because I am Israel's father. Ephraim is my firstborn son. Hear what the Lord has to say, O nations. Proclaim it in the faraway lands along the sea. Say the one who scattered Israel will regather them. He will watch over his people like a shepherd watches over his flock. For the Lord will rescue the descendants of Jacob. He will secure their release from those who had overpowered them. They will come and shout for joy on Mount Zion. They will be radiant with joy over the good things the Lord provides. The grain, the fresh wine, the olive oil, the young sheep and calves he has given to them. They will be like a well-watered garden and will not grow faint or weary any more. The Lord says at that time young women will dance and be glad. Young men and old men will rejoice. I will turn their grief into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy in place of their sorrow. I will provide the priest with abundant provisions. My people will be filled to the full with the good things I provide. The Lord says a sound is heard in Ramah, a sound of crying and bitter grief. It is the sound of Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because her children are gone. The Lord says to her, stop crying, do not shed any more tears. For your heartfelt repentance will be rewarded. Your children will return from the land of the enemy. I, the Lord, affirm it. Indeed, there is hope for your prosperity. Your children will return to their own territory. I, the Lord, affirm it. I have indeed heard the people of Israel say mournfully, We were like a calf, untrained to the yoke. You disciplined us and we learned from it. Let us come back to you and we will do so. For you are the Lord our God. For after we turned away from you, we repented. After we came to our senses, we beat our breast in sorrow. We are ashamed and humiliated because of the disgraceful things we did previously. Indeed, the people of Israel are my dear children. They are the children I take delight in. For even though I must often rebuke them, I still remember them with fondness. So I am deeply moved with pity for them and will surely have compassion on them. I, the Lord, affirm it. I will say, my dear children of Israel, keep in mind the road you took when you were carried off. Mark off in your minds the landmarks. Make a mental note of telltale signs marking the way back. Return, my dear children of Israel, return to these cities of yours. How long will you vacillate, you who were once like an unfaithful daughter, for I, the Lord, promise to bring about something new on the earth, something as unique as a woman protecting a man. The Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, 
I will restore the people of Judah to their land and to their towns. When I do, they will again say of Jerusalem, May the Lord bless you, you holy mountain, the place where righteousness dwells. The land of Judah will be inhabited by people who live in its towns, as well as by farmers and shepherds with their flocks. I will fully satisfy the needs of those who are weary and fully refresh the souls of those who are faint. Then they will say, under these conditions, I can enjoy sweet sleep when I wake up and look around. Indeed, a time is coming, says the Lord, when I will cause people and animals to sprout up in the lands of Israel and Judah. In the past, I saw to it that they were uprooted and torn down, that they were destroyed and demolished. But now I will see to it that they are built up and firmly planted. I, the Lord, affirm it. When that time comes, people will no longer say, The parents have eaten sour grapes, but the children's teeth have grown numb. Rather, each person will die for his own sins. The teeth of the person who eats the sour grapes will themselves grow numb. Indeed, a time is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. It will not be like the old covenant that I made with their ancestors when I delivered them from Egypt, for they violated that covenant, even though I was like a faithful husband to them, says the Lord. But I will make a new covenant with the whole nation of Israel after I plant them back in the land, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and write it on their hearts and minds. I will be their God and they will be my people. People will no longer need to teach their neighbors and relatives to know me. For all of them, from the least important to the most important, will know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their sins and will no longer call to mind the wrong they have done. The Lord has made a promise to Israel. He promises it as the one who fixed the sun to give light by day and the moon and stars to give light by night. He promises it as the one who stirs up the sea so that its waves roll. He promises it as the one who is known as the Lord who rules over all. The Lord affirms the descendants of Israel will not cease forever to be a nation in my sight. That could only happen if the fixed ordering of the heavenly lights were to cease to operate before me. The Lord says, I will not reject all the descendants of Israel because of all that they have done. That could only happen if the heavens above could be measured or the foundations of the earth below could all be explored, says the Lord. Indeed, a time is coming, says the Lord, when the city of Jerusalem will be rebuilt as my special city. It will be built from the Tower of Hananel westward to the corner gate. The boundary line will extend beyond that, straight west from there to the hill of Garib, and then turn southward to Goa, the whole valley where dead bodies and sacrificial ashes are thrown, and all the terrace fields out to the Kidron Valley, on the east as far north as the horse gate, will be included within the city that is sacred to the Lord. The city will never again be torn down or destroyed. God, this passage of Jeremiah is a, is a really important one for a variety of reasons. For Israel, obviously, it's important because this is uh, the covenant that you made with them, with uh, that their people would be yours, uh, that you would show mercy on them for all the things that they had done, that even though you are disciplining them, that the mercy was still there, the love was still there, and carrying over into the third part, that security, that you still love them, you still care for them, you will still provide for them, and you will still bring them back, and you show them all of your promises that you are making to them as your people. And even though this was meant for Israel, I think as a Christian today, we can hold on to these promises as well, that we are your people, that even though we are humans and do a lot of stupid things, that you will show us mercy, and that our relationship with you is secure. Ironically enough, or oddly enough, it's the last one that floors me. I don't have security in this life. Um, I have... Up until recently, I've never had a relationship where I felt secure in it. Um, I've had a lot of people in my life, for a variety of reasons, leave my life, um, either through 
um, dying or being killed or left on their own measure for a variety of reasons. And so when I'm involved in a relationship, whether it be a friendship, um, somebody I've just met or a dating type of relationship, I don't have that. In fact, I, I know that that's one of my issues that I constantly am working on. I never feel secure in a relationship. It really doesn't have anything to do with me. It just has to do with all of the things that have happened in my life and, and people have always left me or have died and left me. Um, so to know that in that covenant with us that there is a peace that is secure um, excites me and frightens me at the same time. Because if anybody's going to be antsy about the word security, it's going to be me. I've been on my own for a long time. I've made my own way in the world for a long time. I tend to deal with a lot of things in my life on my own. Because there hasn't been a security piece in my life from somebody else. Then when you came into my life a little over a decade ago, that changed. Suddenly there was somebody who not only promised not to leave me, but honestly wouldn't leave me alone. Um, which always humors me that you weren't going anywhere. And even on those days where I wanted you to leave, uh, you're like, nope, I'm in for the long haul. And to me, even though I'm over a decade into this relationship, I still am surprised by that. And I know I shouldn't be. I know that when you promise something, I should just trust in it and trust it 100% that you're always going to be there. Um, but I unfortunately look at you through my human eyes and, and how other human beings have treated me. And I know that's not fair to you and it puts you in a box and it makes you really small as my God. But I'm learning and you know that I am working on that security piece. And I am learning time after time after time that you aren't going anywhere. That there's nothing that can separate you from me. So I love the passage in the middle of this where it says, The descendants of Israel will not cease forever to be a nation in my sight. That could only happen if the fixed ordering of the heavenly lights were to cease to operate before me. Now, when I go out on my balcony... Uh, of this amazing cottage that you've given me with this beautiful view and I'm kind of away from the city so I can see all of the stars sparkling in the sky it's one of my favorite things that when I come home at night that the sky's all dark and it's all lit up with these beautiful stars uh, over the water but I know and feel secure that those stars will always be there there's not a doubt in my mind that as the sun sets tonight that the stars will come out interestingly enough even if fog were to come in which it does a lot here and i can't see the stars i still know without question that the stars are still there so how odd that i am secure in knowing about the stars that that they are always there whether i can see them or not but i still have this life that I live of anxiety that there there is a part of my heart in all honesty that doesn't have that security that you so clearly promised in this passage and I know that that comes from my own doing that has nothing to do with anything you've done in my life in fact quite the opposite you have never done anything to make me believe that you've left me um, but in that process of having faith, which truly that's what it comes down to. I have faith, obviously, <laughs> that you exist. I know that you are God and you are sovereign. I know you love me, not to the depth that you actually do, but I, I'm starting to understand the love part. But the security part is just baffling to me, and I know that's something I need to work on in my faith. Oswald Chambers said, Faith is deliberate confidence in the character of God whose ways you may not understand at the time. So just because I can't see what you're doing because fog has rolled into my life doesn't mean that you're not still there, that I should be able to be secure in the knowledge that you aren't leaving me. You know, I grew up with somebody who would physically remove their love from me when I did something wrong. Um, 
And that is really hard. And it's really hard to wrap my heart and my mind around the fact that I serve a God who won't do that. And in fact, he sacrificed his only son so that that wouldn't happen. He sacrificed his only son to forgive me for doing things that are wrong so that we, you and I, could continue to have a relationship. So I could be secure in the knowledge that you weren't going anywhere, that you were going to be with me till the end of days. So I do know this is a faith issue. I do know this is a heart issue. And you know that I continue to work on it. But God, it's just powerful passages like this where your promises to Israel to be your people, that you will show them mercy even though they've done a lot of really bad things. And they have security that you are not going anywhere even in the middle of, of being disciplined by you. It's a powerful passage and I think it speaks volumes to what I need to work on in my heart with you. God, I do thank you for the security you've provided in my life. It, it gives me hope that perhaps there's relationships I could have out there uh, where people wouldn't leave me for a variety of reasons as well. Um, and I know that that's important to you for us to have those healthy relationships while we're here on earth um, that mimic the relationship and reflect the relationship that you have with us. I'm working on it, God. <laughs> I just continue to need your help and your guidance in it. In your son's name I pray. Amen.